Okay, problem number 14 says, given the relation A, and then it gives us a bunch of points, 3, 2, 5, 3, 6, 2, 7, 4. Um, it says, which statement is true? Both A and A inverse are functions. Neither A nor A inverse is a function. Only A is a function, or only A inverse is a function. Okay, and the way we think of this, uh, the function here, this function A, is a function from x to y coordinates. So we start at x, we go to y via this function a. a inverse would be going from y to a, would be in the reverse direction. So in a we have the coordinates 3, 5, 6, and 7. So 3, 5, 6, and 7. And under the y coordinates we have 2, 3, 2 again, and 4. So we have 2, 3, I'm not going to write 2 again because we already have 2, and I'll just put 4 there. Now, the function, we can just think of it as lines going from elements of x to elements of y. So 3 <coughs> maps to 2, like that. 5 maps to 3, like that. 6 maps also to 2. So 6 goes up here to 2, and 7 goes to 4. Okay, now the definition of a function is that every, uh, every element of x is mapped to only one element of y. So 7 only goes to 4, 6 only goes to 2, 5 only goes to 3, and 3 only goes to 2. We can have this like with 6 and 3 where they both go to the same place. That's fine. We just can't have 3 splitting off and going to 2 and going to 4. That doesn't make any sense. That's not a function by the way it's defined. So we have that a is a function. So uh, that would mean 1 and 3 are true. Could be true. Okay. Now the inverse function is going the other way. And we have a violation of that right here the inverse function, because 2 would go to 3, and it would also get assigned to 6. We cannot have a single, you know, a single element, a single member, a single number being mapped to two different places. It can't be in two places at once. So that means number 1 is not true, because a inverse is not a function. And so the answer here is 3. Only a is a function, not its inverse, just a. All right, the next problem, number 15, says the expression cotangent times secant is equivalent to one of these. Okay, and we have to know our definitions here. Cotangent of theta is equal to 1 over tangent of theta, right? And 1 over tangent of theta is 1 over sine over cosine. So in other words, we have cosine theta over sine theta. So those are just two other ways to write cotangent. These are definitions. You have to memorize these things. You have to know these things. Okay, secant theta, okay, secant theta, okay, secant is 1 over cosine. That's just the definition of it. It's just 1 over cosine theta, right? So when we multiply cotangent times secant, we're multiplying this expression by this expression. Okay, so when we multiply those two, we get cosine theta over sine theta. That's the cotangent part, times 1 over cosine theta. Okay. And just like any other fractions, uh, whenever we have something in the numerator canceling with something in the denominator, whatever's left over is whatever's left over, sine of theta, 1 over sine of theta. Okay. And this is the definition for cosecant, CSC, of theta. Okay. So the answer is cosecant of theta, which is right there. All right. Next problem, number 16, says if z1 is negative 3 plus 2i and z2 is 4 minus 3i, in what quadrant does the graph of z2 minus z1 lie? So basically, we're just doing uh, addition here with complex numbers. So z2 minus z1 is equal to 4 minus 3i 
that's just z2, minus the quantity, minus 3, plus 2i. Okay, we distribute this negative through the parentheses, and we have 4 minus 3i, min oops, plus, because minus minus plus, 3i, right, and then minus 2i. That's not even an i. That should not, that should not be there. Let me erase that. Let me get rid of that. Uh, one moment. Why is it not erasing? I don't know. Edit undo, edit undo, edit undo. Let's, uh, there we go. Okay. Sorry for the confusion there. That should not be there. Okay. Now we're all clear. Now we're ready to go. Okay. So 4 minus 3i plus 3 minus 2i. That's what this equals. Well, that's going to give us 4 plus 3, that's 7. Minus 3i minus 2i is minus 5i. And we want to know what quadrant this is in, so we would just graph real quick. This is the i-axis. This is the real numbers, the fancy r, right? So we have 7 in the real numbers, and then we go down by 5i. And there's our complex number. 7 minus 5i. And this is in quadrant 4 because the quadrants are numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the answer is quadrant 4.